Hey guys, today I've got a special video for you where I'm going to be sharing some great free games from the Steam platform with you. If you just want to chill out and have some fun, but don't want to spend any cash, then this is the video for you. So let's get started and check out some of the freebies we can find over on Steam. The first game in our video is called Age of Water, The First Voyage. The first voyage is the very beginning of your Age of Water experience. Jump right into the intense naval combat, craft your first boat, explore the water world, and get a good idea of what Age of Water is about. Become a sea captain I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. on a post-apocalyptic earth completely covered in water, and go on an adventure in a huge open world. Sail through storms, fight and trade, capture other people's boats or build your own, extract resources from the bottom of the ocean, reveal the secrets of the age of water world, explore the world at your own pace, discover new settlements and meet their inhabitants, complete tasks, search for and extract valuable resources from the bottom of the ocean, earn money on trade or simply sell the artifacts you have obtained, and when you get the idea of how this world works, build your own base. At first, you will only meet computer opponents, but later you can challenge other players if you are confident enough in your skills and gear. Always be on the lookout, if your task is to transport illegal goods, then other players may well take the quest to hunt smugglers. In Age of Water, everyone decides for themselves who they are today a peaceful traveler or a bloodthirsty pirate. This prologue is a good sample of what I experienced in the CBT, albeit very limited. His sample was well polished, and flawlessly executed. The Translocator mission is the final mission before you would be locked out of the character you made, and cannot free roam after doing that quest. I spent hundreds of hours in the CBT, and the world is vast and rich with combat very similar to a high-speed shooter style with the machine guns, cannons, and other ship equipment options. High skill ceiling to the gameplay, leading shots, and targeting specific ship components or sailors that control weapon systems, pumps, weak spots like power producers, and speed boost components are all very fine motor control skills you would need to master to succeed. Very engaging gameplay. If you play this game and don't pay attention to the time of day, it's regular that you start seeing sunlight through your windows and go oh gosh ITS 7 am. Happened to me more times than I want to admit. I highly recommend this game. You definitely won't regret if you try it yourself. The next game is called Hold the Noise. If you are looking for more achievements, then I guess this is one way to do it. It's a very strange game. I think I'm one of the first, if not the very first person to write a review here. It's very short unless you're going to keep the button pressed forever. I'm not sure about the developer's intentions. There are several achievements that I didn't get, and to be honest, given the description of one of them, I'm not sure I want to try. The game cycle. Does it seem to be about holding down the button until you go crazy? Although you can also just put a paper weight on the keyboard and turn off the sound. So my guess is that this is more of an experimental artwork than a game. And for the free price, it would be hard for me to find flaws in this. Art is subjective, and the visual component is of interest. The developer seems to have another game that looks more interesting. Overall, the game is a strange and short an impression based on holding down a button. Her motivation and purpose are unclear, but it is difficult to find reasons for criticism for a free game. The visual component is of interest and it can be assumed that this is more an experimental work of art than a full-fledged game. The developer also has another game that looks more attractive. In general, the game is worth its free price, but it may not be suitable for everyone who prefers a more standard and diverse gameplay. 10 Creeping Sound Drones Out of 10 I really enjoyed playing this one. It's called Museum Mystery. Museum Mystery is a delightful addition to the world of deck building games. While it may draw inspiration from a certain movie, it manages to stand on its own as a unique and enjoyable experience. As an indie title that is still in early access, it shows promise for even greater improvement in the future. The game does have some rough edges, particularly in the storytelling department. However, its atmospheric design, humor, and the inclusion of deck lore collecting more than make up for any shortcomings in the narrative. It's evident that the developers have put a lot of thought into creating an immersive an engaging environment for players to explore. Visually, Museum Mystery impresses with its well-done graphics and animations during battles. The attention to detail in the design of the cards adds to the overall enjoyment of the game. While the presentation may not be on par with larger, more polished titles, it is important to keep in mind that this is an indie game and should be judged accordingly. One area where Museum Mystery falls short is in its music and sound effects. They can be described as below average and do not necessarily enhance the overall experience of the game. However, this can easily be remedied with future updates, and it is worth noting that the gameplay itself is strong enough to compensate for this shortcoming. 
If you are a fan of deck building card battlers, Museum Mystery is definitely worth giving a try. With its unique premise and the potential for further improvements, it promises hours of enjoyable gameplay. The inclusion of real-life photos attached to some of the collections adds an extra layer of intrigue, and I am excited to see what additional content the developers will bring to the game in the future. In conclusion, the gameplay in Museum Mystery is quite unique and engaging. As a player, you take on the role of a curator who must collect various artifacts and protect them from thieves. The deck building aspect adds a strategic element to the game, as you carefully choose the cards to add to your deck for each encounter. It offers a satisfying sense of progression as you unlock new cards and improve your collection. The game's premise, while inspired by a particular movie, manages to stand on its own and create an enjoyable experience. That I really appreciated about Museum Mystery is its gameplay mechanics. As a deck building game, Game. It offers a refreshing twist on the genre by incorporating a theme centered around exploring a museum and uncovering hidden artifacts. The mechanics are easy to grasp but provide enough depth to keep players engaged. Building a deck of cards to strategically defeat opponents and progress through the game is a satisfying experience. Whether you're a fan of the genre or simply looking for something fresh and entertaining, this game comes highly recommended. Our 40H game is called Pixel Royal 3D. This game takes old days of Pixel Gun to make it even better for everyone as the optimization and balancing and paywall issues got fixed in this game. The concept of all weapons and gears needing only coins which are obtainable without paying is amazing and it makes this game even more fair for every player and more contents are accessible to everyone. Also not to mention how this game's developer cares a lot about his community and his game. It's rare that I would see a game developer play their own game a lot, which is a good way of finding ways to improve the game. I had high expectations for this game before it it came out, but the release of this game was kind of chaotic, as there was bunch of bugs that disturb everyone's gameplay and progression. This game felt like an early release as it was lacking features and game security and had bugs on release, but it's good that for an early game like this the bugs get fixed in a day or few after they are discovered. New features and changes are dropping into this game pretty quick too, which overall shows that this game has a lot of potential. In addition to the initial chaos and bugs, the game's graphics and design are truly reminiscent of the old days of Pixel Gun. The retro style of the game adds a nostalgic touch, creating a sense of familiarity for those who have played similar games in the past. The attention to detail is evident in the pixel art and animations, evoking a sense of charm that is often missing in modern games. One of the most remarkable aspects of this game is its accessibility. With all weapons and gears being obtainable without the need for in-app purchases, there is a true sense of fairness among all players. This eliminates the advantage that some players may have had by purchasing exclusive items, and instead places everyone on an equal playing field. With each update, the game becomes more polished and enjoyable, showcasing the dedication and passion of the development team. As long as they stay in touch with the community and continue to prioritize player satisfaction, there is no doubt that this game will evolve into something truly remarkable. I highly recommend this game for you to play. Protect Heart on Steam is an absolute gem of a game, and I can't help but sing its praises from the rooftops. From the moment I launched the game, I was mesmerized by its stunning visuals, which are both vibrant and enchanting. The art style is a perfect blend of whimsy and detail, creating a world that you can't help but get lost in. The soundtrack complements the visuals flawlessly, with each note elevating the experience to new heights. It's the kind of music that sticks with you long after you've stopped playing. Gameplay-wise, Protect Heart strikes a perfect balance between challenge and enjoyment. The controls are intuitive, making it easy for players of all skill levels to jump right in. However, don't let the ease of control fool you the game presents a variety of puzzles and challenges that require creativity and strategic thinking to overcome. Each level is thoughtfully designed, providing a satisfying sense of progression and accomplishment as you advance. The story is another standout aspect of Protect Heart. It's heartfelt, engaging, and beautifully told, with characters that are both relatable and endearing. The narrative depth adds a rich layer to the game, making each victory feel all the more significant and every setback a reason to try harder. It's a story that resonates on a personal level, encouraging players to reflect on their own experiences and connections. Moreover, the developers of Protect Heart have done an outstanding job of creating a supportive and welcoming community. The forums are a great place to share tips, strategies, and experiences, and the developers are actively engaged, listening to player feedback and continually improving the game. This level of dedication is rare and speaks volumes about the love and care that went into making this game. In conclusion, Protect Heart is not just a game, it's an experience. It's a testament to what indie games can achieve, blending stunning visuals, captivating gameplay, and a compelling story into one delightful package.
Whether you're a seasoned gamer or new to the world of video games, Protect Heart offers something special that is not to be missed. It's an absolute must-play, deserving of every accolade and a shining example of the artistry in game development. So, we've moved to last game in this video, and it's called Toy Shire, Room 1. This game feels nostalgic as heck. We all played with those little green dudes. Uh, go, go on without me. Just go. A good soldier never leaves a man behind. Growing up and this game hits you right on the nose. The gameplay played exactly like every other tower defense game out there so please do ignore those negative reviews about it not playing like one. It is a tower defense. There's like two ways to do it at most and these guys did both in one. I saw some people complaining about the kid's dialogue. I can agree, he does get a bit annoying when he repeats the same line, but you know what. You play as the kid and kids repeat things over and over. So as far as that goes, you guys did well in representing that he is in fact. An annoying little kid playing with toy soldiers. 10 to 10 from a dad with three kids the whole Toy Story theme, love it. Nothing comes closer to our childhoods than Toy Story and the graphics were very It Takes Two which is wonderful because it has such a childlike feel to it. Good choice. The star system is a good idea but it felt very underwhelming due to the fact that I need those to do both, upgrade towers and summon units, it felt like I was forced to pick either low level towers with summoned units or have only high level towers. It's not a big miss for me but the units felt a bit clunky and needing work as they would just not shoot anything sometimes until the enemy was on top of them. Overall, I do say if you like tower defense games and are looking for something not too hard but not too easy with the classic tower defense feel to it, this is it. This will be a hit among the TD community right next to Bloons tower defense, please keep it up and nurture this game. Thanks for watching the video about free games on Steam, hope you found something interesting or useful. Subscribe to my channel for updates on new game reviews and other cool videos. Thanks for your support, and see you soon with more amazing games.